another sparkling fresh edition of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs. I'm your host, Colin Jason Ivan Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And in this podcast, I will basically freeform on any topic that uh, interests me. And for the most part, it will be articulated as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the wonderful grammar technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David hyphen Wynn Colin Miller. Full stop. Bruh. 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 All right, so what are we going to talk about? Let's talk about titles. Let's talk about titles. Something that has fascinated me for a long time, especially within this construct. Now, I remember when I first spoke with Colin David Eifenwin, Colin Miller on the telephone back in 2017. I called him up and... uh, I just couldn't believe it was him on the other end of the phone. I really couldn't. And it certainly sounded like him, only it sounded like a really a really tired and weakened David Wynn Miller as opposed to the David Wynn Miller I was used to hearing in his videos. The very confident and well-spoken individual, he as opposed to that on the phone, he sounded very tired and weak. Which... In hindsight, I know he was probably ill at that time. But he still answered the phone. And he still answered my questions. And I'm bringing this up because the first time I spoke with him on the phone, I didn't even, I wasn't even thinking. Instead of calling him David, well, actually, I did ask. I I asked, I said, may I speak with David Wynn Miller, please? And he was like, this is him. And then from that point on, I didn't call him David. I called him Judge. I was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. How are you, Judge? You know, but I don't, don't ask me why now that I did that then. Because the individual then would have said that it was out of respect, out of honor. Uh, Thinking back on it now, it was definitely sort of like meeting a rock star for me I'm just in awe like meeting a celebrity meeting someone super famous meeting someone you admire you look up to at the time you know so on and so forth I was starstruck so I called him judge apropos of nothing he didn't ask me to do that I just did it because that's what he claimed to be now the way he claimed it it wasn't in an arrogant way if you if you get my meaning, he wasn't being condescending or anything when he claimed anything like that. He just said it. Plenipotentiary judge, federal postal judge. It wasn't like he was bragging or trying to lord his title over you. He was just saying it just like, like it was. That, that's what it was. Um, so that's the beginning of my journey with titles. Because after doing that, and then especially after he passed away, I began thinking to myself, why did I call him judge? Like, was that necessary? Because by calling him that, I basically, psychologically, in my mind, put him above me, which violates rule one, rule equal. If we're all to be equal on a geometric level playing field of communication, why do we participate with titles? The only time a title comes into effect is when authority must be exercised, like in a court or something like that. But I wasn't in a court. I was on the phone. So that was a lesson learned for me. All right. So that's why I do not participate with anything like that ever. As opposed to Russell J. Gould, when I contacted him via email in 2017, up until we stopped communicating in 2020, I never once addressed him 
by a title. I always addressed him as Russell J. Gould. Basically, man to man. Live life claimant to live life claimant. So that way we're on the geometric level playing field. We are equal. Because rule one, rule equal, right? Maintaining it. So again, that's the lesson I learned. And uh, wow, certainly if Colin David Ivan and Colin Miller were still here, I would have a plethora of questions for him regarding all of this stuff. But he's not. So I had to go out and get the answers for myself through my own experience, my own trials and tribulations, and so on and so forth. So now, outside of all that, thinking about uh, this topic, if someone claims a title like a king, or claims the title of a commander, or claims the title commander and chief, or postmaster general, or muster master, or titles like this, Postal Spectre. All right. No, no. Leave Postal Spectre out of that. Just like a, a, a simple title like Commander-in-Chief or King. Why would someone want that title? Psychologically. Ladies and gentlemen, in your own minds, think about that. Would you want a title like that? What kind of individual would would consciously seek out and claim that title and want other people to address them by that title. What type of individual, psychologically speaking, would have to want to do that? Is there ego involved? Well, most certainly there is ego involved. You just have to listen to any Russell J. Gould video of him telling stories about slapping people around and people going or running from him and things like, like he gets a kick out of it. Like, and then usually he follows it up with, but I'm very humble. Mm, sure you are. Sure you are. <laughs> sure you are with all these folks coming around calling you the chief. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a shit ton of humility right there, folks. Anyways, that, that's just my personal viewpoint, by the way. So I'm just thinking to myself, what kind of person would want that? Because I have never, ever, ever claimed any types of titles like that unless it pertained to me specifically. Like, I have claimed the title of commander, but it was a commander of my own vessel. My email vessel, my document contract, postal vessel, uh, court venue I've claimed commandership over things like that, but I have never, ever claimed it over other people. Ever, ever, ever. Never. I've claimed to be master, but only master of the grammar, meaning I have mastered it, not meaning that I'm in charge of it, but that I have mastered it, meaning I know it, I have closure on it. Master of a vessel in in the maritime uh sense of the word, meaning I'm in full command of the vessel, but never a master of other men or women. Never. I've never claimed a title, a military title, like a general or something like that. I've never claimed the title of judge. Never, ever have I ever claimed the title of judge. So what type of person would want to do something like that? Now, I just read an article that was sent to me by a friend detailing, well, not really detailing, but giving generalities about how Mark Lowercase K. Kishon Christopher and three or four of his cult followers were arrested last year for trying to kidnap a coroner, a county coroner maybe it was, or a coroner. Attempted kidnapping because they wanted to dole out capital or not capital. Geez, what am I saying? Stop and correct. They wanted to dole out corporal punishment to the coroner, to the county coroner for 
fraud. Whatever that means. Now, in this article I'm reading, there is no uh, reference to correct sentence structure. There's no reference to grammar fraud. There's no reference to David Wood Miller. Thankfully, thankfully, none of that was ever mentioned in the article. But it is mentioned that Mark Sean Christopher was a federal postal judge and that there's a such thing as the federal postal court. Uh, which, those of you who are familiar with the history of quantum grammar will know that David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould had a federal postal court. And furthermore, if you have closure on the grammar, or if you have close to closure on the grammar, then you know that that's not really saying anything out of the ordinary to say you have a federal postal court. If you know what federal means and postal means and court means, then you know that any, literally anybody can have a federal postal court. Anybody. If they know those mechanics. So, these things are in the article and Mark Lowercase K claimed that title, a federal postal judge, even though he refused to speak to anybody, he refused to give any evidence, his, uh, I guess you could say flunkies, I think it was a husband and wife and then another person, his flunkies spoke, saying they didn't want to harm anybody, their volition was just to stop the fraud, what fraud that is. Uh, we don't really know except that they said that they were wrongfully something about the coroner was wrongfully ab abusing dead people or something like that I don't know but me reading this knowing the history of things and uh, reading this article even though I know the background it's these people come off like they're nutcases. And the reason why they come off like they're nutcases and probably the reason why they're in prison and they were found guilty in a fiction court and wait for it, wait for it. I've been saying this for years, but wait for it. All you Marcus Sean Christopher cult followers out there who still follow him and still think that he's the savior and can do no wrong and blah, 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 blah. And I've been saying this for years. Wait for it. The reason why, probably the main reason why, by my guess, that they're in prison and that they failed is because... Are you ready? Are you ready for this reason or should I wait? They don't have closure on the grammar. I looked at the paperwork. Well, some of the paperwork that was offered in the article, copies of the papers that Mark Lowercase K had presented to the court. First of all, there's no correct sentence structure flag on it. There's a different flag on it. And it's all written in plain, simple English, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. No correct grammar at all. So what fraud are these people talking about? And what corporal punishment were they planning on inflicting upon the county coroner? That they were going to, well, in the legal term, they were going to kidnap him. But I'm sure in their terms, they were going to call it apprehending. All you folks out there that bought judge ships from Mark Sean Christopher for thousands of pounds... All you folks out there that got your little sheriff badges in the mail from Mark to be his sheriffs, his bailiffs, his postal inspectors, and so on and so forth. All you folks out there that are actually going to try or were with the volition or were going to try to do what he said and arrest people, this is what's going to happen to you. This is what's going to happen to you. You're going to end up in prison. I can guarantee it if you try and do anything, anything like that. Because guess what? Your main man ended up in prison. He doesn't have closure in the grammar. 
If you're a student of his, you certainly don't have closure on the grammar. And I can say that with 100% confidence. So it doesn't matter, I guess the long story short, it doesn't matter what title you claim. If you claim to be a federal postal judge, you can still go to fiction prison. And by fiction prison, I mean it's a prison of the fiction system. It doesn't mean the prison itself is fiction because the 10 by 10 cell is definitely not fake. There's nothing fraudulent about the 10 by 10 cell if you're locked in it. Locked down 23 and 1. All right? There's nothing fake about that. Ask Mark. That's probably why he's being so quiet. He's going to keep his mouth shut because... He's found out that you can only perpetrate your delusions and illusions on other people for so long before the fiction's going to come along and say, look, you're welcome to have your own delusions and illusions, but we are the masters of delusion and illusion and we decide what goes. And there's no room for your delusions because our delusions take priority over yours, you're out of here, pretty much. That's how I view it anyways. Doesn't matter what title you claim. So what kind of a person would want a title like that? Like Commander-in-Chief, Postmaster General, Federal Postal Judge? I don't know. Someone like a leader who considers themselves to be a leader, like Mark, maybe, or even like Russell. Russell considers himself to be a leader. And, of course, you're going to hear Russell say in videos that, you know, he's... Uh, well, okay, I don't know if you're going to hear him say it. But I'm pretty sure I've heard him say in videos that he doesn't want to be that, but he has to be. And so this brings me to another element of people claiming titles. And I will bring up Jason Paul Grievous, which most of you probably have no idea who that is. He's a fellow from um, overseas who basically claims the same things that Russell J. Gould claims. Claims to be commander-in-chief of the military, even though he's never been in the military. And he's just a young kid, too. What kind of a person wants that? Now, someone might say, well, someone has to do it. Someone has to take charge in order to steer the ship correctly. Well, you know what that is? That's like saying it's a dirty job. Someone's got to do it. Or I'm just doing my job, or I'm doing what needs to be done. That's just an excuse not to think, in my mind. That's just an excuse not to think. Oh, you've taken on this great weight on your shoulders. You're going to take responsibility for all these people. Okay. Well, what happens when they're getting thrown in jail left and right? Because what you've taught them has failed them. Because what you've taught them is a load of rubbish. Now what? Well, then you can just blame it on them, right? You don't have to take any accountability for it. Folks, that's why I do what I do. That's why I do it the way I do it. That's why I'm not, I'm not a leader. I'm not a leader of anything. I'm a grammar tutor. I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar the, to those who want to learn it. That way they can take autonomy over themselves and they can do with it what they want to do. I don't tell them what they should do. I just give them basically the data, the raw data and knowledge. And then they can do with it what they want. Because I'm not going to tell them what to do. Because nobody told me what to do. And I appreciate that. That's why I never fit into the Russell J. Gould crew of people. Because they're all by my viewpoint, authoritarian followers. They all do a chain of command thing. They all want to bend the knee at the end of the day. And that basically just means they, they would prefer if they could just hand over the reins to someone else and let someone else drive the car while they sit in the back. 
That's basically what it is. And I'm not one of those people. I'm the one that wants to be up driving. But I'd actually prefer to be in the car alone or have someone in the seat right next to me as a co-pilot as equals. I don't want to be, I don't want to have subordinates or anything like that. Because everybody has to carry their own water. That's the way I look at it. And yeah, we can team up, we can contract, we can uh, combine our efforts. And definitely there are strength in numbers. However, in this scenario, as far as groups go, I have tried to be a part of groups, but it has always fallen apart simply because groups, from my experience, have always turned out to just be uh, comprised of authoritarian followers and then like one or two or three people at the top who are just in it to make money and are bullshit artists. That's what I've found in groups. And I'm just being straightforward about it. That's why I don't get involved in groups. They always, you know, usually start out good. But it always gets corrupted in the end. For whatever reason. And there you go. So that's why I'm very wary of titles. Anybody who claims titles, you're probably not going to be seeing me contracting with them. Because when someone starts claiming titles like that, like commanding other people or taking authority over others, especially without the people's consent, like like I've said about Russell J. Gould or anybody else that claims to be commander-in-chief, I never consented to that. Isn't contract by consent? Then Russell say contract is by consent. David Wynn Miller, contract is by consent. That's the whole point of correct sentence structure. David Wood Miller did not consent to his children being taken away from him. That was not by consent. That was by coercion. He was forced to give up his children by the legal system. So then he created quantum grammar. Well, I mean, began to create quantum grammar and use those things. And then his children were returned to him. It's, it's a rule one, rule equal scenario. So why would you want to force someone else to do something against their will if you don't want to be forced to do something against your will? I hope that makes sense. I hope that analogy makes sense. I know that a lot of people are probably going to have trouble wrapping their minds around that. Like, you don't want to be trespassed upon. You don't want your children taken away from you. You don't want your house taken away from you. You don't want your freedoms or whatever you call it taken away from you. But yet, you want to force your views on other people. You see what I'm saying? Like those folks out there that want to, they want to say, oh yeah, we need to put, we need to force the governments to use correct sentence structure and teach correct sentence structure in school. We demand it. So you, you want to force people to learn correct sentence structure. Hmm, that's interesting. Because I guess if you want a large number of people to learn it, that's how you're going to have to do it. Because very few people possess the tenacity or even the intelligence to learn it. Well, not intelligence, more like patience. They don't possess the constitution to go the full nine yards. They don't. They don't possess it. I know this from six plus years of teaching. Very few people are suited to learn this. So the only way you can get a large number of people to learn is to force them to actually learn it. And even then, they'll probably all flunk anyway, so the majority of them. That's a joke, folks. That's just my uh, sarcastic humor there coming out. Anyways, titles, I got no use for them. If you come at me using some sort of title like king or magistrate or master or commander or whatever king I don't even know whatever title then you're probably not going to get too far with me because I give two shits about who you think you are who you think you are tells me a lot about who you really are let's put it that way 
Me, I'm a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar tutor. That's it. It's my claim. I make it. I can perform on it. I can back it up. Proof's right here on this channel. Or you can contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I'll set up a video consultation. And you can ask me whatever you want. And I'll prove it to you there. Will you step up? Let's find out. Uh -huh.